Hey guys, Max here. Just thought I'd make a little video just to show you guys some of the tips and tools I use to do something like a little project like this, which, uh, you know, once you do, get your skills up, have practice, you can put into something bigger like that DC3 I'm making. So um, I'll go over some of the stuff I use every day uh, to build what I build and how it can make your life easier when it comes to trying something like this. So I'll put a link in the description on uh, the plan for this plane so you can have a go yourself if you like. And uh, I've got a couple of build photos of it, but I don't have a lot of resources, so I'll put them up as well for you to look at. And um, yeah, it's something worth giving a go. It's cheap, it's easy, it's quick. Um, you'll be up in the air in no time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> So here we are at the workbench guys and we have the plans here uh, there's a bit of a background so you guys can just have a look at those basically when we look at a plan we're looking at all the information there's a lot of information on a plan that you really need to take uh you need to study them several days just to get your head around and so there's just all these little sort of nit bits around that you need to pay attention to read understand um, if you're not sure, get on the forums. There's several uh, forums for most planes, especially this DC3 I'm building. But <clears throat> yeah, I guess translating this from paper to something like you know my previous video show where I've got the whole plane, it seems like such a long way away when you're sitting here with this piece of paper. But there are some really instrumental tools that I use to get me there. Okay, so let's start with um, some of my favorite tools I like to use. So first up, we have our razor plane. So the razor plane, this is a Master Airscrew branded one. Uh, I like these because um, you can buy refills of the blade. The blade lasts a very long time. Um, I tend to sort of, I give it a sharpen on the stone every now and again, but eventually it does go and you need to put a new one on. So the way this works basically is it, um, it removes small amounts of wood at a time. So it's great for contouring leading edges and just, just making the, there's a lot of uses for it, um, smoothing down areas where two sheets might join and there's a bit of a, a junction or something like that. Like it's just, just a tool I use every time, every time I'm, uh, building basically um, so yeah that's the razor plane probably the next most favorite tool I have is the balsa stripper so what this does is by setting this um, this distance here you can basically cut any width um, sheet or stock you need so just say we were planking or something we needed uh, you know, this is an arbitrary amount we needed some strips basically put this on it's important to hold the two pieces to each other because if you don't you're, you'll find you'll, you'll kick off either way and that'll ruin your cut the bad thing about this is like I do a lot of this on a sheet where I just have a 900 long sheet where I do the whole thing and if I make any sort of mistake you've ruined the whole sheet basically because I rely on the on the uh, on the end of that sheet to be pretty true it's usually truer than the cut I can make with this if I muck up so that's important so basically hold it on uh, run it through four thick four long pieces of wood I tend to when I get to the end like this I tend to start feeding the wood through pushing it against this and you'll find that it's uh it's a bit more accurate because at the end, when you're pulling it this way, you'll find at the end, you'll tend to, at the end, sort of go off track like that. It's very easy to go off track there. So I find if I'm concentrating on holding this flat, pushing the wood through, I tend to get a better finish at the end. Not so important on the first cut, but when your hand cuts in and you've got a little dag on there, it gets worse and worse, makes the end of the, the sheet worse and worse. So yeah balsa stripper um i would say that is an essential tool um back when i first started i didn't realize they exist and i was buying like 
quarter inch stock because I didn't know there was another way. So now you just buy your quarter inch or 6.5 mil sheet and just strip it as you need it. And it's usually pretty good if you can do it the way I just showed you. Um, so probably the next tool I use a lot is the razor saw. So there's a couple of different ones I use. I use this one and I've got a, a thicker one that I use as well, um, which um, I use them in the miter box. So that's this one, it's well worn. But basically this guy here, these bits hit the miter box. Whereas this one, they don't. It's, it's deep enough that it actually doesn't bottom out. So it's pretty simple to use this, just a matter of uh, letting the saw do the work, it's just like a normal saw. Trying not to damage my plans here, so um, yeah. So these are invaluable, I'd get yourself some of these. Well, the next thing I use a lot is just your average Stanley knife. Um, I also like to have um, just razor blades on hand, so I just buy a bulk pack of these and they're just disposable, you just use them. Maybe sometimes I use this for a minute, it's in the bin. Um, this is good when you're looking like more fiddly areas where you can't get your razor plane into and you just need to knock a, you know, knock a little corner off or you need to, um, you can even use them to cut sometimes, but I find if the knife's not very sharp, like this one's sort of been used, but it's gonna do it. Um, if it's not very sharp, it will actually just crush the wood, which is where the razor plane excels. It doesn't crush the wood. Um, that's that's pretty good, but yeah, I prefer the razor razor plane if I can get. Oh, sorry, the razor saw if I can get in there. Okay, what have we got next? Um, so I like to use, believe it or not, files. So files. Um, especially aggressive ones can sometimes be really handy for just shaping bolsters so like if i had like a control wire or you know like something a hole that i drilled or something i wanted a hole there it'd be as simple as um just doing that and pretty quick i've got a you know well contoured hole um, with no splinters or anything like that um, the same goes for um this big file here so this is especially good when you're um, doing your ribs or your so when you're making your notches for your ribs um, where you're running your main spar through or stringers or anything um, just using something like this to sort of get you ready to go is a really good way I find that sometimes when you're cutting um, <clears throat> and you've done the cut and it's just not wide enough, just running that file just, just on the side can just open it up a little bit, whereas you're probably going to have less luck trying to sort of, you know, you probably remove too much if you try to actually razor blade it. Um, you might get lucky, but then your cut is a little bit um, it, it, off. It's not 100% perpendicular to the bottom of the cut. so. That's why I use this, and you see the. I'll just run that over that, so it sort of sharpens it up and makes it a lot straighter. Um, so the next important tools, well, they're always important to each other, but um, your rulers. So it's good steel ruler um, because when you're cutting something, especially when you're cutting balsa, um, you'll find that you'll be running. You'd be running that razor right along there. Watch your fingers too. You'd be running that razor right along there. And with a good steel ruler, that'll actually guide you. Okay. Also got another tool I like to use, which is the little square. So it's just a little basic square. Um, what makes this good is that um, when you're laying up ribs and you want the rib to be 90 degrees this tool allows you to get there pretty nicely so this is for when you're doing your ribs against the wing and laying your spar and everything so um, a million one uses but that's mainly what I use it for just to trip up my spars or wing ribs okay next tool <clears throat> uh, a pen or a sharpie I use a pen and a sharpie. I couldn't find my pen today, so I've just got the sharpie. But this is um, important for 
all sorts of things. So for marking areas you need to work on, um, often when I see a blemish or something in something I'm doing, or I might just put a cross, and that way I know, hey, there's something wrong with that, I've got to come back to it. Um, if I'm cutting and measuring, I'll probably use a, um, probably use a pen because it's just a bit finer than that. But yeah, this has, a, has its uses, so uh, it's, just, it's a, something worth mentioning. Um, okay, next thing that I'll use um, is a Dremel. So Dremel is very well used. Um, it has a lot of different attachments, which make it um, extremely versatile. So um, at the moment I've got this cutting head on because um, I need to fix the landing gear mounts, which I'll be showing you later on the DC-3. Um, so it's going to need a bit of work. I'll explain that later. Um, well, the only other thing worth mentioning that I've put on the table is your glues. So your adhesives are you know, pretty important and something um, you would use quite a lot. So <clears throat> something like your, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, like your CA is an instant adhesive where you just get two pieces of wood. Um, you know, put a piece of a bit of glue there. Um, you know, wait a bit. Sometimes you see it smoke. Uh, but yeah, we're using this as a, as a, it's a pretty strong joint actually. I would argue some people say that the CA, this stuff isn't strong enough, but I find that when done right, usually what fails on this joint is the wood around the joint, not the actual joint. So, um, but you know, if it's done well, if you have a look there, that's basically not the joint itself. That's a, that's a layer of this balsa from this piece of wood that has been left there. So um, when done right, this joint is quite strong, I feel. And it's one that I use fairly regularly because it's quick, I don't have to wait. Um, and usually the, the finishes, like so the covering or the fiberglasses will also consolidate the outer. So um, if there was to be a failure of the wood, as I say, because you can see that this piece of wood is still stuck there. It's the wood itself that's now damaged. Um, you know, it's all still held together. So some people um, like to use um, the white glue. So I personally, I do use this as well, which is a white um, adhesive. Um, it's probably a little bit more flexible, but still, if, if it's going to fail, it's going to be that, that wood. The wood is so fine that it's going to break usually before any, any join will, unless um, when you've made the join, there's a, there's, a, there's a gap between the two pieces of wood and this, this glue hasn't been able to take, which is why this is probably good, but I just try to get my joints as good as possible, get pieces of wood as intimate as they can be. Um, I've got six minute epoxy as well, so this is great for just um, small little jobs where you need a sort of high strength. So what I do like about this is that um, it's good for covering and, and filleting and joining pieces of wood such as ply and laminating and um, adding that ply to, to firewall mounts, that sort of thing. Um, uh, that's pretty good for something that's not a nitro or not a two-stroke or anything like that, just electric, it's usually good enough. Uh, but when I need an even higher strength joint, um, I'll use like my epoxy. So I'll use this with a like a fast hardener and this stuff takes you know 10 12 hours to sort of set but like in terms of my dc3 for example like this stuff i've used throughout the landing gear area the engine the cells area that sort of thing like where a really high strength is needed and and it's usually a combination of sort of hardwoods and um and balsa and sheeting and uh, you know, there's a lot going on in those areas and i find that it, it holds a, a, a balsa piece together quite nicely um, instead of just relying on like a CA, that single point of contact, it's just everywhere. Okay guys, so some of the more important tools I use are the scroll saw, which I use for all my uh, formers for the fuselage, sometimes the ribs if they're uh, like a marine ply or a light ply, I'll do them on that. All the balsa ones I'll usually cut with a razor blade. Uh, probably not essential, but something I use all the time and I've only sort of recently acquired is uh, the belt sander. Why the belt sander is good is because you can do a bunch of ribs together and just uh, uh, true them all up to each other on this thing. So I've been loving having that. I did all my DC3 ribs on that. I realized um, once I was dealing with marine ply, um, I needed something better than just a hand 
uh, finishing I had been doing with all my other planes. So uh, this has been great. So uh, I've also got uh, like your drill, pretty run of the mill. And yeah, it's pretty much all the hardware is over here. Okay guys, well thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from seeing what tools I use and how I use them. Uh, if you feel like I've missed an important one, uh, that wasn't an exhaustive list, but for sure let me know in the comments and we may be able to run over how that's used or whatever if you guys aren't sure. Um, with regards to the plans, I know that we were pretty much skimmed over them, so we'll go a bit more in depth in how to utilize them uh, in our next episode where I talk about the nacelles and the landing gear sort of mounts in the DC-3. Um, the, the progress on that, I've just been basically just tidying up some of the little fiberglass areas and not much else. But the plan is uh, landing gears um, in the coming weeks anyway. So uh, what else? The, the plane that I had to start, I think from memory that was an RCM Sportster. So I'll chuck a link in the description for you guys so that you can have a look at that if you were thinking about having a crack at a plane. It's, um, it's not a bad one. I haven't flown that one yet. I haven't actually chucked all servos and, and everything in, but it's like 90% done. So um, yeah, from all reports, it's a ripper of a plane anyway. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's about it for now. So yeah, once again, Thanks for watching guys and um, we'll talk soon, bye.